Oh no, what is this? How did you manage to make something so awful? My mother-in-law made a disgusted face and uttered those words. Even though it was a cake specially brought to celebrate her 60th birthday, I knew my mother-in-law didn't like me. But for the sake of my husband and daughter, I had endured it all until now. But today, of all days, I couldn't forgive it. She has no idea how much thought went into that cake. She probably doesn't even care to understand. Unforgivable. To casually say such things just because she wants to harass me. I'll make her realize that those words were her downfall. My name is Nina, 37 years old. I work as a system engineer at a certain company. This year marks our 7th anniversary of marriage. I met my husband Simon through work, and we dated for two years before getting married. Fortunately, I became pregnant with our daughter soon after. Ruby, our daughter, is currently in second grade. Since she was a toddler, she has been a good girl who often helps around the house. Lately, she has developed a passion for cooking and baking, not just helping out. I always watch over her closely while she cooks. She finds joy in everyday life without any major accident. On this day, after finishing work, I went to pick up Ruby from the after-school program, and we stopped by the grocery store together. What would you like for dinner? When I asked my daughter, she happily responded, "Mommy, I want to have omelet rice tonight." Omelet rice? What is it? I saw the recipe on TV the other day. I want to try making it myself. I see. All right, got it. Then tonight, let's have Ruby make omelet rice together. Yeah, I'll do great. My daughter had a dreaming smile as she picked out the ingredients. After returning home, we started to cutting the ingredients together. Although it wasn't the most perfectly shaped dish, Ruby insisted on making the egg part by herself, and I watched over her. In those moments, I could feel her groan. When my husband came home, he was also amazed at the sight of the dish. Did Ruby make this by any chance? Yeah, I did. I'm a good cook, am I? In response to her father's words, Ruby proudly replied. He gently smiled and rubbed Ruby's hair. You're amazing, Ruby. Being able to make something like this. You're such a big girl. Yeah. I want to become good at cooking, like mommy. Indeed. Mommy's cooking is always delicious. Yes. And I want to grow up and marry someone like Daddy, just like Mommy did. M marry? <laughs> Ruby, it's just too early for that. Huh? But I already have someone I like. W what did you say? You said that you like Daddy the most, didn't you? <laughs> Looks like Daddy is feeling a bit jealous, huh? I couldn't help but burst into laughter after their interaction. I truly loved this life, filled with laughter every day. This family seemed like pure happiness, and indeed, I, I was genuinely happy. But there was one thing that troubled me. It was the presence of my mother-in-law. She has disliked me since the beginning of our marriage. Or rather, it seems like she just can't stand my existence. She can't accept the fact that her only son married me, and we live a happy life every day. When I first met my mother-in-law during the marriage introduction, there didn't seem to be any concerns. I thought she was a kind and gentle person, but in reality, she turned out to be completely different. Back then, my mother-in-law was merely playing the role of a good parent. After getting married. Her true nature emerged, and it was truly hell. Whenever I visited my in-law's house, my mother-in-law would say sarcastic remarks to me behind my husband and father-in-law's back. When Ruby was in my belly, my mother-in-law laughed mockingly and said, 
Nina, aren't you ashamed of being so chubby? For a moment, I couldn't believe my ears, but I composed myself and responded calmly. Huh? Ah,、uh, have I gained that much weight? Well, the doctor did say that I should gain a bit more weight. So, you have no awareness as a mother, do you? Don't you understand that if a parent is chubby, it can have a negative impact on the baby in the belly. Well, but I get regular checkups, and the baby is healthy. Huh? I mean, it's no good for you to talk back to me like that. It's pitiful that someone like you is the mother. The baby in your belly deserves better. At that time, I was pregnant. And my mental state was quite unstable. The words "the baby deserves better" from my mother-in-law kept bothering me, and it weighed heavily on my chest. Am I really a bad mother? Like she says, is it pitiful for the baby that I become a mother? All I wanted was for this baby to grow up healthy. As I questioned myself, I was tormented by these thoughts. Since it was my first pregnancy, I was cautious about various things from the early stages. I avoided raw food and food that was not completely cooked. I continued working, but avoided overexertion and made sure not to expose my body to extreme cold. I had nutritious meals and engaged in moderate exercise. For me, who was doing my best for the sake of my baby. My mother-in-law's words were deeply hurtful. Fortunately, I safely gave birth, but I couldn't help but wonder what kind of sarcastic remarks she would have made if something had happened to my daughter. Just thinking about it sent shivers down my spine. The only relief was that my mother-in-law didn't care about the gender. It was fortunate not to be subjected to comments like. Useless daughter-in-law who can't give birth to a boy. Even now, my mother-in-law truly adores my daughter. Whenever we visit at my in-laws' house, she always prepares toys and sweets. My daughter Ruby is also very fond of my mother-in-law, and just the other day, she said something like this: "Hey, mommy, when are we gonna visit grandma next?" "Huh? Um, I'm not sure. Maybe soon." It's just that Daddy's schedule is. No, I want to see Grandma and Grandpa. Well, yeah. Oh, I know. Ruby, shall we call Grandma right now? Yeah, let's do it. Reluctantly, I dialed my mother-in-law's number on my phone. After a few rings, she answered. What is it? My mother-in-law responded coldly. Um, it's been a while. Is it a good time for you? What? I'm busy now, you know. I'm sorry, but Ruby wants to talk to you. Ruby? Fine. Let her talk. Pass the phone to her. Oh, okay. Here she is. As soon as I mentioned my daughter's name, her attitude noticeably changed. While I appreciate that she does on my daughter, as a daughter-in-law. It's quite complicated for me. I handed my phone to my daughter, and she started talking with a smile. Hi, Grandma. Just as my daughter called out, my mother-in-law's high-pitched voice resonated through the phone. She seemed to be enjoying the conversation with my daughter. After a while, my daughter handed me the phone. Taking the phone from my daughter, I said, "Thank you very much for taking the time for her." Ruby is really happy. Well, I don't want to hear your voice, though. Oh, but I have one thing to say. Come to our house next Sunday. Huh? What? You didn't forget, did you? Next Sunday is my birthday. It's only natural for you to come and celebrate, right? Oh, yes, I understand. I will come. Get yourself together, will ya? This is why you are an useless daughter-in-law. She abruptly hung up the phone, leaving me with nothing but a sigh. 
Meanwhile, my daughter happily jumped into my arms. Hey, mommy! Grandma's birthday is coming up soon, right? Yes, that's right. Grandma will be turning 60 this time, so it's a very special birthday. Then, mommy, let's make a cake for Grandma. A cake? Yeah, I want to celebrate Grandma, so I want to try making a cake by myself. Good idea. Then, mommy will help you too. Let's look up the recipe and try making it together. Although I had some reservations about going to my in law's house, we decided to make a cake at my daughter's request. We also consulted with my husband and agreed to keep it a secret that our daughter was the one making the cake. We decided to make a fruit filled sponge cake, which is my mother in law's favorite. At the weekend, I was awakened early in the morning by my daughter, who was eager to start. On that day, we devoted ourselves to making the cake from the morning. My daughter insisted on doing it by herself, so I just prepared the recipe and gave her instructions. Ruby, next, mix the eggs and sugar with the hand mixer. Mix it well until it becomes a bit white. Okay. How's it? It looks good. Next, should we sift the flour? And we should preheat the oven too. Got it. We also need to cut the fruits, right? Yes. But let's take it one step at a time, okay? No rushing. Okay. It seemed like doing tasks while cleaning up was still challenging for her, and the kitchen became messy. My daughter was genuinely enjoying the cake making process, putting in a lot of effort for her grandmother. I wonder if Grandma will be pleased. Of course she will be. She'll be surprised when she finds out you made it. But we can't tell her that I made it until she eats it, okay? Right, right. I got it. Let's celebrate Grandma together. Oh, Mommy. Don't forget to bring the scarf we chose for her. That's right. For this day, I had gone with my daughter to the department store and bought a nice scarf that would suit her. With the cake successfully made and a present in hand, our family of three headed to my in law's house. Oh dear, welcome! My mother in law, with a beaming smile, greeted us from the entrance. However, that smile was directed only towards my husband and daughter. As we walked towards the living room, my mother in law whispered to me, You could have stayed at home, you know. I wanted to retort immediately, but today was her celebration. I couldn't spoil the atmosphere, especially since my daughter was looking forward to it. And so, my mother in law's birthday party began. To avoid raising suspicion, I decided to hand the cake box to my mother in law myself. Happy 60th birthday! Here, this is for you. Oh, a cake? Is this homemade by any chance? Uh, yes. Sorry, it's not something from a famous shop. Well, then, let's all eat it together later. Then, soon after we finished the meal, the cake was cut and distributed to everyone. My daughter, unable to contain her excitement, spoke up. Grandma, try it! If Ruby says so, then I'll try it right away. My daughter eagerly watched my mother in law's reaction. But in the next moment, my mother in law deliberately spat out the cake and gave a mocking expression as she said, This is awful! What is this? How could you make something so terrible? Um, wait! It's. I've always thought that you were bad at cooking, Nina. How could you bring something this terrible here? Well, no, actually, could it be that you have put poison in it? Nobody should eat this. Ruby, it would be terrible if you feel sick. Let's throw this away. My mother in law collected all the distributed cakes and roughly tossed the entire box into the trash can. In that moment, something snapped inside me. The anger I had been holding back so desperately finally exploded. 
I knew very well that she didn't like me, but I couldn't forgive her today, of all days. She had no idea how much emotion was poured into that cake. No, she probably didn't even try to understand. I confronted my mother-in-law directly. It's Ruby who made it, you know. What did you say? I'm saying that the cake you just threw in the trash. Ruby made it for you this morning, all by herself. Wait, wait, wait a minute. What on earth are you talking about? Ruby? Making such an elaborate cake all by herself? No way. There's no way she could do that. Of course, I helped by looking up recipes and giving advice. But Ruby made everything, from the batter to the decoration. That can be true. Ruby? As my mother-in-law reached out her hand, my daughter was already sobbing uncontrollably, tears streaming down her face. She pushed away my mother-in-law's hand and glared at her. Grandma, you're really mean. I've always thought you were a bit mean to mommy, but you just did that. Ruby, it's not like that. Grandma is feeling a little under the weather with a cold, so... Even so, that wasn't nice at all. I actually thought it was delicious and... That's a lie. You threw the cake in the trash. I hate you, Grandma. Being told I hate you by her beloved granddaughter must have been a great shock for my mother-in-law. Her, her face turned pale and she let out desperate screams. It wasn't just my daughter who was disillusioned by my mother-in-law's character. Everyone present, including my husband and father-in-law, stared at her with cold eyes. My mother-in-law tearfully pleaded with me. Nina, please do something. If things continue like this, Ruby will... Ruby will what? I mean... If things stay like this, Ruby will end up hating me. What are you talking about? She already hates you. Can't you see it from her face? My mother-in-law burst into tears and repeatedly apologized. But neither my husband nor my father-in-law let anyone, let alone my daughter, would even look at her. In the end, my daughter spoke up and said, Let's go home. So, we left without giving the gift prepared for her. Afterward, with my daughter's consent, we decided to cut ties with my mother-in-law. It was at the time that I finally opened up to my husband about the mistreatment that I had endured from my mother-in-law all these years. Upon learning everything, my husband repeatedly apologized. I'm sorry, I didn't know anything. My husband apologized over and over again, but I didn't blame him. I didn't want our relationship with him or my mother-in-law to further deteriorate by discussing it. It was also my responsibility for hesitating to open up to my husband out of fear and uncertainty. After some time, my father-in-law informed us that he had decided to divorce my mother-in-law. It seemed that my mother-in-law had repeatedly borrowed money from him when she was given the choice to repay it all at once or agree to divorce she reluctantly chose divorce now that she was kicked out of the family home I wondered what would become of her however no matter what happened to her it was out of my hands I wanted her to carry the burden of hurting our daughter for the rest of her life as for my daughter, she quickly recovered from the incident that returned to her cheerful self, much to my relief. She now speaks assertively, saying that someone who treats her mom so badly is not a grandma. You know what, mommy? Cutting ties was the right decision. Although I caused my daughter sadness, I was able to sever ties with my mother-in-law. A truly happy life can finally begin. I look forward to cooking together with my daughter in the kitchen, cherishing each day. And one day, I will happily pass down the kitchen to her.